everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Rachel Cruz Show. And the minimalists are back. We're here. Thank you, guys. Thanks Stay for having put us. put on the gray couch. Yeah. Hanging out. Um, well, the last video, if you didn't watch, released last week, so make sure to go check that out. We talked about their new documentary. Um, but you guys have a new book coming out, and I love the title. Mm. Love People Use Things. <sighs> I love the switcher. Oh, it's brilliant. Yeah. So good. Such a great title. <laughs> okay, so tell me all about the book. Well, you know, the title of this book, if you had to sum up our message in one tweet, it would be that love mm -hmm. people and use things because the opposite never works. So, yeah, we really wanted to go into uh, some some relationships, really, some advice on relationships with all different sorts. Yeah, you know, really, the, the title itself is, it, it, it really points out a problem, right? Right now, what are we doing? We're using people and we're loving things. Mm -hmm. or, or we're just loving things too much. I can say I love my couch, but I also love my wife or my daughter. <laughs> yep. Like, well, yep. wait a minute. And so what we want to do is write this relationship book. So it's a highly personal book. Uh, and we talk about a lot of the things we've never talked about in the, over the past 12 years. But I will tell you this. In order to write a relationship book, we have to sort of fix the relationship with ourselves. Mm -hmm. and, and what we realize, like the relationships that are getting in the way of our relationships are quite often these other relationships. So the book is about healing the seven essential relationships in our life. It starts with the stuff. So our relationship with stuff is getting in the way of everything. Yep. We're the minimalist. So let's start with the stuff. Let's declutter the excess so we can look inside and start focusing on what's truly important. Our relationship with the truth. We're lying to ourselves mm. about a lot. Uh, our relationship with ourselves, right? Not only are we unhealthy, we're too busy, we're stressed out. Yeah. So how do we identify our, our, our relationship with ourselves, our relationship with our values? Most of us don't even know what our values mm, are. How are we going to live a meaningful life if we don't know what our values are? So we help people identify the four different types of values in there. Beyond that, it's our relationship with money. You're featured in our money chapter, I know, by the way. I know, so, so special. Oh <laughs> and, and so we have, we have, as you know, a, a, a really unfortunate relationship with money and yeah. debt, and yeah. especially in this country. Mm. Uh, but beyond that, we have a relationship with creativity and distractions. We're so distracted. We're in a more distracted mm -hmm. society than ever right now. Yes. And it's getting in the way of, of doing meaningful work and creative work and mm -hmm. creating and contributing beyond ourselves. And then ultimately, our relationship with other people. And, and, and so what we're, it's not about I have to fix each one of these relationships, but it's about understanding these relationships so that I can improve my relationship with other people. Hence, yes. love people, use things. Oh. Yeah. And it's been interesting. I... I think it was mostly probably during the pandemic. I just had this like moment where I thought I was journaling and I thought this conviction, I was like, Rachel, focus your time and energy on the things that money can't buy. Mm. So my marriage, mm -hmm. my kids, my health. Yes. started working out for the first time, y'all, since having babies six years ago. Wow. Um, but like I was like, I really want to spend my time, my energy, my focus, and even my money, my resources on these things that are so important in my life mm. versus stuff that money can just buy, right? Because we can we mm -hmm. can take so much energy yeah. in all of our stuff. Mm -hmm. Did you find anything for the book as you were writing it that you thought, oh, dang, we didn't realize that? Or like, that was way worse than we thought. <laughs> yeah. You, you want to talk about some of the case studies that are in the book? Yeah, for sure. We, we, uh, we actually took 47 different families and had mm. them go through their own version of Ryan's packing party. Uh, so <laughs> if you saw our last film on Netflix, Less Is Now, uh, you can see Ryan, he literally boxed up everything as if he were moving, and then he unpacked it over a 21-day period. It's the one time you're forced to confront all of your stuff is when you're moving, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> and, and so um, we had 47 families go through that as well. And we learn so much about all of their uh, experiences, about their interactions. Mm -hmm. And we document many of those case studies in the book. And it's not just their relationship with the stuff, but it starts to expose their relationship mm -hmm. with the truth and yeah. how they've been lying to themselves, lying to others, hiding things from their spouses and family members because they're ashamed, mm -hmm. right? And so when we start letting go, it's not just letting go of the stuff. It gives us the ability to let go of some of that shame that we've been accumulating over the years. Yeah. It's amazing how our stuff, yeah, can can become that thing, right? And you're you're exactly right. You're focusing on the thing, and it's like, no, no, no. There's so much yeah. inside that's going on. Yeah. And it's like, and suddenly when you let go of a physical item, it forces you to stop and let go. So why do yeah. you think, you said it earlier, but we're so distracted. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, dual screen, watching TV and looking at our phones. You know, we're trying to do all these things. Why do you think that is? Like, why do we feel the need, I'll just say in America, I'm sure it's the world, but yeah. in our country to be, we're just so distracted. Why do you think that is? Did y'all find out when you were looking at well, the book? Well, there are, there are so many different ways to ephemerally get relief, to get pleasure. Mm -hmm. So we look to these, these ephemeral things like social media or buying the new iPhone. These things will bring us temporary pleasure, 
But I think the problem is, is that we, we seek pleasure too much. There's nothing wrong with pleasure, but if that's all we're seeking, then we're going to just end up on a, on a really crappy diet, essentially. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, the, I'll tell you the one thing I love about this book is people often ask, you know, hey, Ryan, hey, Josh, I get it. You guys had, you know, big corporate jobs. You made all the money. You did it all. You had it all. You realized that wasn't it. And, and, and now you're doing this minimalist thing. Um, I get that, but I want to experience it for myself. Hmm. <laughs> I want to go through the corporate job and make all the money. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure you guys are right, but I just want to do it myself. Yeah, make sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so people will ask, like, how, how, do you, how do I get rid of that desire? And I didn't really have a great answer because it's much, you know, there's a much deeper thing going Absolutely. on. Absolutely. But what I love about this book is it really helps people, uh, it helps uncover the things that they should or I don't want to say they should, but we suggest that yeah. they focus on. Yeah. And when you focus on these seven major relationships, when mm-hmm. you really develop good relationships with the truth, with the people around you, with your finances, with uh, creativity, when you develop good relationships, a lot of those desires go away because those desires are only there because there's something missing inside of us. Mm-hmm. And these, these ephemeral pleasures are a very easy, quick fix, but they don't last very long. No, uh, Yeah. There's a quote in the book uh, from the comedian Ronnie Chang. Uh, he he has a Netflix special, and he said, he's an immigrant. He said, I feel like every night in America feels like a competition to see how many screens I can fit between my face and the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's why we're so distracted, because all of a sudden yes. it's like big screen TV, then I got my laptop here on the lap, and the iPad, and the iPhone, and the Apple Watch. Watch. Right. Oh, you have all goodness. of these distractions, pings, notifications, and it's driving us crazy. It's not giving us any time to actually be in the moment. We're mm. constantly, we're, we're constantly planning a life. We're never living a life. Today we're talking about things we need to stop wasting $20 on. Baby shoes. Mm -hmm. They're babies. They're not walking around. Don't buy shoes for them. Lottery tickets. Yeah, the Powerball jackpot. You got one in 292 million chances of winning, so don't waste your money. An Olaf waffle maker. I mean, pretty dang cute. I know. And the results? Adorable, but let it go. Wipe warmers. Yeah, the baby's gonna survive. Keep your $20 clothes for your pets. I mean, super cute, fabulous, bougie, all the things, but you don't need to spend $20 on it. Guys, these things are totally unnecessary. What I do need to make sure I'm taking care of are these guys. I remember when Winston and I first got married and we talked about life insurance. Honestly, it was easy for us to talk about because we wanted to keep each other covered in case the worst were to ever happen. That's why we have term life insurance through Xander Insurance. It's $20 to $30 a month that I am more than happy to spend. Xander shops the top rated term life insurance companies to make sure that they find you the best rates for the coverage that your family needs. You can have the same peace of mind that we have. So go to xander.com to get started today. Don't waste any more time. So how can people be intentional with their time, would well, you say? I, I think it starts with your, your values. I mean, you cannot live a meaningful life if you don't know what a meaningful life is to you. Mm-hmm. And where you start is with those values. So anyone uh, watching this, they can go to the minimalists.com forward slash V for values. And we actually have a worksheet there that helps people really get clear on what it is that they value. Because you know, I used to chase happiness. I used to cha- chase success. And now what I focus on is trying to live a meaningful life. And the way that I have learned how to do that is my short-term actions aligning with those long-term values. And the beautiful thing about living a meaningful life is success and happiness. They are a byproduct of living a meaningful life. So got to start with the values. That's probably the the lowest hanging fruit that anyone could start with. Mm. Your 30-30 rule. Mm -hmm. I love this. Explain (laughs) to everyone what it is. Well, yeah, we have a few rules here. This is one of the rules that's actually in the book. Uh, So the 30-30 rule is like, we also call it the wait for it rule. Mm. And so the 30-30 rule says, hey, if something costs more than $30, it's not that I can't afford it, but I'm going to give myself 30 hours. I'm just going to wait for that purchase. And what that does is it creates a little bit of friction, just enough to where I question that purchase, and I don't need to do the one-click buy, the immediate gratification. No, 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 I can wait. And if I wait for 30 hours and I still feel like, yeah, you know what, that's going to add value to my life, great. Minimalism is not about deprivation, Mm. but it is about making intentional choices. Well, how do we do that? Well, 
The, the problem is we've removed all the friction. At first, that sounds like a, a, a good thing, but think about that. If you remove all your friction, now all of a sudden you're on an ice rink and you're sliding all over the place. You have no control anywhere. So what we've tried to do is reintroduce some friction just enough so we can get some traction. Mm. I mean, it's like simple delay gratification, right? I mean, yeah. it's all it is, and there's none of that. It's mm. not possible today. I mean, even on your phone, Apple Pay, <sighs> half the stuff, like, oh, just yeah. double click, scan my face. and that, I mean, there's yeah. no friction. Yeah. No friction's buying. Mm. And forcing yourself to do it, letting that emotional high drift away, yeah. right? You wait a day, mm -hmm. and it is and it is amazing. I had the 24-hour rule. I like the 30-30 rule better. But yes, but it is. I mean, it's amazing how our emotions yeah. drive so much of this. Yeah. So as we close out, I just want to know, overall, the, the minimalist— the minimalism, the lifestyle um, that you guys talk about that's just so great. What, what kind of freedom comes from that? So people watching oh. that think, okay, it sounds kind of hard, it sounds intentional, it sounds like a lot of work, but it does sound really great. What, what kind of freedom oh, comes with it? I have like four things coming to mind. You know, I'll, <laughs> I'll talk about freedom from debt. So that's huge. I mean, you know that. This, this mm -hmm. is what you guys preach. So um, not having debt is, it's just unbelievable. You know, when you spend so many years just with the shackles on of debt, and you finally get those off, it is an unbelievable mm. free feeling. The other thing, too, is I really feel free from other people's expectations. Mm, that's great. It's yeah. What I've learned in the last 10 years is to be myself as much as possible. And in order for me to be myself, I really had to dig deep to figure out who I was. But once I got clear on that, now, you know, I, I don't get me wrong. I care about what people think. I'm not going to sit here and say I don't hey, care. you're a human. Like, right. yes, yes. Ex ex yeah. Exactly. But I also can look in the mirror and say, hey, am I doing everything I can to be a genuine person? And if so, I can usually kind of let other people's expectations uh, go. So that's that's huge, uh, getting rid of other people's expectations. Yes, for sure. Yeah. 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 You, you know what? When I think about freedom, I'm also thinking about freedom from, from other people's— um, understanding of, of, of my life. Here's what I mean by that. Um, so, so for so long, I, I let externalities dictate my happiness. If mm. I were to just buy this thing, or if I just make this person happy, that's going to make me happy. Well, what do you do? Say you have 500 Facebook friends, try making all 500 yeah. of them happy. <laughs> right. What are you gonna do? You're just gonna make yourself miserable. <laughs> and so instead of that, realizing like, oh no, no, happiness isn't something that can be achieved, it can't be purchased, it can't be acquired, it can only be uncovered. You already have it. Mm. And the things that we have, they augment our experience of life. They enhance our experience of life. We're not against those things. As a yeah. minimalist, everything I own serves a purpose or it brings me joy. I don't have the extra junk that other people expect me to have. Mm. I love that. We talk about being weird. You know, I remember yeah. as the people that like get debt free, we're like, you're weird. You're not yeah. living paycheck to paycheck. That's what the normal American does. You're weird. Yeah. So it's like that element of just saying, you know what? People may not understand it, mm. but like there's such freedom in that to say, yeah, it's going to look a little different mm -hmm. what it is, but it is. It's, it's that level of living, which I think is just, it's beautiful. It's a level of freedom. Yeah. Total I'll, emotional freedom. I'll tell you, when people, like friends and family, you know, when we first called ourselves the minimalists, like, you know, people are, there's all types of irony in that, right? Sure. So, you know, the, the people love to point out the irony, it, a lot of, uh, a lot of judgment, but really what happens is when someone changes their life, you look at that person and you ask yourself, oh, should I be doing what they're doing? And then, so I had friends and family were asking themselves that question. So then they're projecting those answers onto me. Mm. And it was okay. I mean, you know, still very loving, just like to give me a hard time. But what I'll say is after living a genuine life and people seeing the benefits, so many of my friends and family have really come around to maybe not declaring themselves minimalists, but sure. certainly uh, uh, realizing how important it is to live deliberately, to stay out of debt, to uh, not have just a hoard of stuff at mm -hmm. home. So yeah, even though uh, there might be a little bit of friction, a little bit of judgment at first, I mean, it's people, once they see the genuineness and they see they the do. benefits, they they totally, uh, they, they have a different perspective at that point. Yeah, because I'm like, the lie that we, so many people believe is that stuff is going to make me happy. Right. I'm going to buy, buy, buy. And when you see people live a life without a bunch of stuff <laughs> who genuinely have peace and you feel it in their spirit, yeah, it's yeah. like, well, what do you have that I don't, right? That's what right. that's what people are thinking about you guys. And yeah. I think that's why I love it. I love your message and everything you guys do. And so I have one question I want to ask, since y'all are the minimalists. I was like, this is a fun question to ask. Yeah. What are things that you're using, that you're buying right now, mm -hmm. that that is enhancing your life? Mm. Uh, I, I love experiences. So my wife and I will try to do, like, at least one international, you know, trip a year, obviously, because yes. of COVID. We haven't been yeah. able to do that. Yeah. 
but uh, we're trying to get like over to Ireland here later in the year. Um, we live in Los Angeles. There's so much good food there. I love taking my wife out for a nice dinner, and yes. I just love good food. Um, I just use her as the excuse to go and get, get good <laughs> food right, for myself. Right. <laughs> I love it. So, but really, you know, it's all about, for me, it's about experiences. And not only that, but being able to contribute beyond myself in a meaningful way. I mean, this is what I love about, like, the Every Dollar app. You know, mm-hmm. the first line item on there is contribution. Yeah, and, yeah. And so you guys all know about this, how important it is to contribute. So, mm-hmm. you know, we contribute however we can. We've done a ton of uh, philanthropic stuff over the past 10 years. Yeah, we, awesome. we've done a bunch of stuff. We've built a couple orphanages. We funded mm-hmm. a high school for a year. We just built a grocery store in our hometown, Dayton, Ohio. It's actually opening up right now. And that feels so much better than buying another widget or a trinket, right? Yeah. It's not that I'm against stuff, right? Mm-hmm. The problem is exactly what you said, though. Often the object of our desire, like, I want this thing so bad, but as soon as we get it, it becomes the object of our discontent. Mm -hmm. And now it's making us miserable. The thing I thought was going to make me so happy is going to complete my life. Well, I realize, well, no, I'm complete in an empty room. And so the money that I do spend, whether it's on experience or contributing beyond myself or just on some stuff, you know, I need new black t-shirts from time to time. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever it is, those things augment my life, but they don't complete me. I'm complete without them. Yes. Mm. Oh, it's so good, you guys. Mm. Well, thanks for being on. I so appreciate it. Thanks for having us. And you guys, if you're watching today when this is live, the pre-sale for Love People Use Things is out. But if you're watching after... July 12th, July 13th, this comes where you can actually buy it. Get your hands on it. I'm assuming everyone can buy it anywhere books are sold. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I want to make sure that's right. Yes, yes. indeed. Any yes. bookstore, audiobook, all that. We even read it to you if you want. I know. Isn't that great? <laughs> oh, so awesome. And then everyone can find you guys where else? Uh, go to theminimalists.com. That's where you can find everything. Our podcast, our YouTube channel, our books. Um, the secret to Josh's great hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's all there. All there, theminimalists.com. <laughs> it's all there. Well, always a pleasure, you guys. Oh, we Seriously. Love you. Thank you. And you guys, check them out. Devour the content because it's such good stuff on your journey, whether you're getting out of debt, you're trying to build that emergency fund, wherever you guys are. Uh, this message pairs so well side by side and just encourages you and your journey. So thanks again, you guys. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you. Thank you.